But we're going to talk about whether the future is wholly in the cloud, and if it is, what are the challenges that we're going to have to face to get to that point? Are we always going to be stuck in a hybrid model? First, I would say uh, I think we are destined for a 100% cloud uh, model. I think there's a lot of people still who are hybrid or kind of considering the jump to cloud for certain things. But uh, we work with a lot of companies now who are running full end-to-end -end media supply chains uh, in the cloud. Really, unless you have an office where you have people on-premises, uh, you don't really need a lot of on-premises infrastructure anymore. And I would say, at least in the downstream parts of the supply chain, it's, it's very uh, large adoption in the cloud today. I was going to disagree, just so it's fun. Uh, How dare I, you? Because I work in production, so a lot of it, we have a significant, sophisticated cloud infrastructure that we built, so that helps us produce more efficiently, more powerfully, more flexibly. But we have cameras on the ground. We have to have encoders on the ground. So there's a part of the industry that's clearly cloud and downstream from cloud, but the upstream side I'm representing is always going to have a, at least at least content capture and initial encode to the cloud as it can't, there's no way for it to not be on-prem. I, I agree with that statement. I think um, from a, you're always gonna, that, that contribution or that acquisition is always gonna be a thing and you're always gonna need hardware, whether it's high-end cameras or even just your mobile phone or whatever the case may be. But I think the interesting space for me is when you look at the hybrid model or approach to it, you are able to integrate cloud services uh, from a staged or a phased approach, really. So it enables you to minimise risk. Um, you know, so it's low gain. It's, it's low risk to try potentially high gain. Um, you're able to, you know, test and learn and figure out what's right. I also think that will also enable you in terms of the cloud tech choices. That's also another avenue that one would need to, to navigate. Um, you've got the one end of the spectrum, you have your, you know, build your own, which I think that you're referring to there, which does require a lot of resources, engineering, maintenance. So if you're an organization that has that, then that's an option for you. But if you're not an organization that has access to those, um, uh, those resources, you can go down the other end of the spectrum um, in a SaaS sort of like fully managed service as well. So there are choices that you can make out there to dip your toe in the water. And my mantra would be, give it a bash, try it. It's flexible. It doesn't take much to try it out. So um, yeah, so I think if you don't have those, those um, resources, there's other options for you as well. So uh, I think it's a really interesting space at the moment. And just to piggyback on that, completely agree. I think that it's also interesting, Endeavor Streaming is 100% like cloud-centric, but then we're starting to see that it might make sense for some of the streaming to be on-prem. So if you look at like compute, for instance, you know, 24-7 linear channels in different regions of the world, you know, who's got an appetite for it? So I think uh, I agree with all of you guys, and I love that you disagreed because I was going to do the same. <laughs> um, what Rude. But it's, because, <laughs> but it's because you are not doing the live, right? So you True. mentioned that at the beginning. But, but equally, I, I think when you look at, so whilst, you know, you've got the hybrid and phased approach, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about, you know, um, wh where is the future going? And when you talk about compute power, the beauty of the cloud is that, you know, if you've got hardware, whether it's got an EVS, you know, thing that costs 20K and you've got to get the EVS operator, certified operator, use it, you have to probably fly them out there. You can do like, like, like flag like services in the cloud now. So think about reducing your carbon footprint, for example. That's also another significant um, aspect of this. But then just going back onto the underlying infrastructure, um, we're going to probably come into partnerships in a minute, but, um, you know, AWS or whether it's G GCP, whatever, our system's based 100% on AWS infrastructure. What that kind of means is that, you know, people benefit from the latest and greatest features the next time they open their browser. They're not limited to the hardware capacity that they've like, invested in. So, yes, whilst, you know, you still have to make those assets sweat, I think it's really important to try to dip your toe in the water, as I mentioned before, because you can. And you're basically, you know, in creating downstream millions of dollars of hardware savings um, over the cloud. Uh, so that's another interesting angle that, you know, I'd like you to take away as well.